In this talk, the moon and the European space exploration, we will hear why we should go back to the moon after 44 years. And we are very pleased to have Jan Werner as our honored guest today, uh, this evening. And he's the current Director General of the European Space Agency. He is also the former chairman of the ex executive board of the German Aerospace Center, also known as DLR. And you would expect that he would be an aerospace engineer, but he started out as a civil engineer. For the Germans, das heißt Bauingenieur. <laughs> he got the Federal Cross of Merit First Class for his continuous engagement for young academics. And unfortunately, to list all of his doctorates would really take too much time off of his uh, limited talk time. So please give it up for Jan Werner. Yes, yeah, okay, no, no. You have to be quiet because they did not give me enough time. So you have to be quiet and I recommend you to listen and see and if possible, do the whole lecture I will give to you in slow motion afterwards because otherwise I cannot do it in 30 minutes. So what is the return of investment of space? This is a question I get nearly every day. I hope not in this room, but I will answer it anyhow. And the question is, is return of investment always just the money? If you look into our universe, you know we have something like galaxies, and the galaxies are rotating, and according to all our theories which we know about Newton and about gravity, the, spirit, the, uh, the speed at the outer part should be slower than in the inner part, because otherwise these stars would escape. But observation showed that the speed at the outer part is exactly the same as in the inner part, and we don't understand this effect, and therefore we gave it a new name and we call it dark matter. So it's not something we, we really see, it's just an effect. So why I'm talking about this? Because there's another effect which is called dark matter, uh, dark energy. Dark energy, if you have a big bang and then the universe is expanding, according to just the law of gravity, this velocity, the, the acceleration should decrease, the velocity should decrease, and finally it should implode again. Space matters to all of us in Europe, not only to science fiction fans or modern day discoverers. What happens up there has a big impact on our lives down here. Daily life depends on the technologies, services and data that space helps to deliver. When we use our mobile phone, drive our car, take the plane, watch satellite TV or even when we withdraw cash from the bank. Space data helps to save lives at sea. It improves our response to earthquakes, forest fires and floods. It allows our farmers to plan ahead. It helps us to protect the environment and fight climate change. Europe's space industry has seized these opportunities. It is strong and competitive and it creates jobs. By working together, sharing resources and investing in a common future, we are pushing the boundaries of what is possible. Today, we want to ensure that European citizens get the best value for every euro we spend. Copernicus is already one of the world's leading providers of Earth observation data. Now we are taking it to the next level so that it strengthens our security systems and helps to monitor greenhouse gas emissions. Galileo, our own global satellite navigation system, will soon provide more accurate and reliable positioning and timing information. Our planes, trains and cars will be more efficient. And we want to help all the new startups who see space as their next frontier by making it easier for them to access and use space data. All of this is vital to Europe's security and defence and close cooperation with our global partners will only make us safer. Europeans have always looked to the stars for inspiration. Today, our cooperation in space improves the lives of millions of people here on Earth. 